Praise the Lord. Thank you for coming this morning. Uh, it's always an encouragement to, to get up here and look and see that we're, we're scattered, but we're pretty, pretty full today. So I thank God for that, uh, for you taking time and letting the Lord uh, draw your heart to the church. Amen. Uh, in, in these days we see approaching, he said, forsake not the assemblies of yourself together, uh, and, as some, some are. Amen. So I thank you for that. We're going to go to the book of Isaiah today, chapter 5. And then I'm going to flip over to 14 and read one verse, maybe. Isaiah chapter 5, when you get there, if you like to stand for the reading of God's Word, uh, just something that the Lord put on my heart maybe uh, maybe about a month ago, and I didn't know if I was going to preach it or not. I tried to get out of preaching it. I really don't want to, but God, He's the, the boss, so I'm going to do what He says. Uh, so you be much in prayer for me this morning, that God be able to give us eyes to see. Amen. We sing a lot about heaven this morning. But everybody ain't going to heaven. Fact of the matter is, everybody's not going to heaven. I wish they were, but they're not going. It's not set up for everybody to go if they choose the, their own path. So we're going to preach this a little bit different this morning. You pray for me. God be able to strengthen me. And Isaiah chapter 5, start with verse 11. Chapter 5 and verse 11. <clears throat> the Bible said, Woe unto them that rise up early in the morning that they may follow strong drink that continue until night till wine inflame them. And the harp and the vial, the tabret and the pipe and the wine are in their feast. But they regard not the works of the Lord, neither consider the operation of His hands. Therefore my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge and their honorable men are famished and their multitude drieth up with thirst. Therefore... Hell hath enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure and their glory and their multitude and their pomp. He that and and he that rejoiceth shall descendeth unto it and the mean man shall be brought down and the mighty man shall be humbled and the eyes of the lofty shall be humbled. But the Lord of hosts shall be exalted in judgment and God that is holy shall be sanctified in righteousness. I'm going to go to chapter 14. Isaiah 14, this verse 9, amen. I try to connect the dots here. If you want to turn there, you don't have to, but i just trying to connect the dots here. God's trying to tell us something, amen. Praise God. In 14 and 9, the Bible said, Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. It stirreth up the dead for thee, even all the chief ones of the earth. It hath raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nation. You help me pray. One more time, just for a few short minutes, that God be able to use me today. Father in heaven, we come to you, Lord, one more time. I, I pray like so many times before that you move me quickly, God. I, I don't know what I'm doing today, Lord. I'm just trusting in you. I, I know that you've got all the words, God, today that you want me to say. So I let me not say anything of my own, God. Man's wisdom is foolishness to God. So I pray, God, as I stand today, that uh, you give me the words, Lord, to be able to proclaim the gospel. Lord, I pray that everybody here, would, under the sound of my voice, Voice to be able to hear uh, what you're trying to say to them, Lord. Uh, and most of all, let me hear, God, uh, uh, what it is you're trying to say. Lord, we thank you uh, for this opportunity. Lord, we give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you for standing for the uh, reading of God's Word. And uh, there again, I told the Lord I'd rather preach something else this morning, but this is what He uh, brought back to me last night as I began to uh, go and try to maybe uh, seek God and see what He'd have me to bring this morning. And he brought me back to this, something He's show me or maybe begin to deal with my heart a while back. And, amen. I just like to preach to you this morning. Hell is awaiting. Amen. Hell is awaiting. We begin to think and, and the Bible begins to talk about those that uh, they choose not to keep God in their knowledge and uh, they choose to go their own way. Amen. Uh, I like the dog to their vomit. Amen. And the, uh, the sow to her waller. Amen. But uh, we begin to look and think about as we sang. Uh, I told you this morning about heaven and praise God. I like singing about heaven but hell's awaiting for a lot of people. It seemed like so many turn away from the Lord. I praise God they're not just turned away to, uh, to go to a grave but uh, there's a hell after that grave friend. Uh, there's a lot of people believe that uh, maybe when they lie down in the grave that is hell but it's so much worse than that. Uh, the Bible tells us many times uh, a description of hell uh, of just what it's like friend uh, about the darkness. Praise God. I don't like darkness to you. I uh, Praise God. I don't like being in the darkness. I, I kind of like to have a light on. Uh, as a young boy I like the night light and I'm not too far away from a night light now but uh, many people people think it don't matter. I'll be able to handle that. Praise God. There ain't no tough 
enough people in hell. And praise the Lord. Everybody's been humbled in that place. Let me tell you, it don't matter how big they think they were on this earth. It don't matter how much money they had on this earth. Praise God. Hell is the same for everybody. It's the same for everybody that goes. It ain't a good place. Hey, praise God. It's a dark place. Uh, the worm dieth not. These things that we wouldn't want to be around. Hey, praise God. I'd hate to go to that place. I can't preach it good enough to tell you what hell's going to be like. But it's a place I don't want to go. It said hell has enlarged itself. Amen. How many people are there today and they didn't know they was going to end up there? How many backsliders are in hell today? You say, I don't believe in that. Praise God. I don't believe in backsliding either, but I know people that do it. Praise the Lord. How many people are in that place today? They chose to turn away from the Lord. And we got a great example of that in this Bible. You remember the story about Jonah? Praise God. The the Bible said, the word of the Lord came to Jonah. And he said, I want you to go to that great city, Nineveh. And I want you to cry out to them. And what did Jonah say? (laughs) Oh, (laughs) he said, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go somewhere else. You know what happened at that very moment? Jonah's hell began to wait for him. Jonah's hell began to prepare for him. And the Bible said that when he was told over the ship, there was a great fish prepared. Oh, Lord, you read the story he talks about, maybe in chapter 2. He said, and then in the belly of the whale, I cried out. Hey, praise God. Hell was awaiting on him. As soon as you reject God, I'm not going to be before you long this morning. As soon as you reject God, hell is awaiting on you. Just like it did for Jonah. He thought everything's good. I'll just run from God. He said, I'll be able to go to Tarsus. I'll get out. I praise God. I'll go down to Joppa and I'll get away from him. I'll make sure I don't go to Nineveh. I'll make sure I do it my own way. But you know what? Praise God. Hell come for him. And hell is going to come for a lot of people that choose not to do what God tells them to do. It would have been a whole lot easier if he'd have said, okay, I'm going to go down to this uh, boat and I'm going to say, how can I get to Nineveh? Which boat's going to Nineveh? Praise God. You know what I'd like to say today, God? What is it you want me to do? I'd like to get on the right ship, wouldn't you? Glory to his name. I don't want to get on the wrong ship like Jonah did, going to the wrong place. As soon as that happened, I believe God began to prepare that fish. I don't know where that fish lived at. I know sometimes now that uh, they put these uh, uh, detective devices on them and they know how far a, a shark swims and they know that in the summertime maybe it swims 100 miles. Or I don't know where that great ship come from, friend. But it began to open up and wait on him, just like hell is for everybody else that's turned away from God's will in their life. How many people just sit in the house of God and turn away from what God's got for them? There's multitudes upon multitudes in the valley of decision, and they would not, friend. Hell is a real place. I'd love to preach you heaven every day because that's the place I plan to go. But you know what? Like I told you earlier, everybody ain't going to heaven. Chances are, and I don't want to say this to hurt your feelings, but if you look at the Bible, praise God, if you look at the, the parable of the sower, chances are somebody here may end up in hell. Chances are somebody in the sound of my voice, amen, maybe even me, may end up in that place. You say, I don't believe that. Well, bless your heart. Are you seeking God with all your heart and all your mind and all your soul? Are you seeking Him? Are you loving Him with everything inside of you? There's a lot of people, praise God, in that awful place. <laughs> we read about one. We'll talk about it in a minute, maybe. A lot of people in that place, <laughs> they decided to go a different direction. They decided to get on the wrong ship. What ship are you on today, friend? Are you headed towards Nineveh? Or are you headed away from it? I tell you what, if you're headed, amen, away from from it. Hell is waiting on you right now. It'd love to have you. Glory to his name. Hell would love to have every one of us. It'd love to take me down. It'd love to take you down. And it all starts inside of a man. It all starts inside of a woman. Just a little bit. Praise God. Don't you know if you'd talk to Jonah, I mean, praise God, if you'd talk to him and you'd have said, you think in a couple of days you're going to be inside a fish's belly? He just said, you're crazy. Amen. You think in a couple of days one of us might be in hell? You're crazy, preacher. Am I crazy? I hope I am, friend. I hope ain't none of you going, going to that place. But there's one thing about it, amen. If you'd have talked to him, he'd have said, there ain't no way. I ain't even planning on getting on no ship. I ain't even planning on that. He didn't know when the Spirit of God came down. How many people, when the Spirit of God came down, came right down to them and they turned away from it? They didn't know that that very next day they was going to die and lift up their eyes in hell, friend. How many people, the very next day, the very the same day they turned away from God? I've heard preachers preach about it, and that maybe God called them to go talk to somebody and went and witnessed to them and, and tried their best to witness to them and, and tell them, you need to go, you need to get your, your soul right, and you need to come and pray. And they said, oh, preacher, 
preacher. I don't want to do that now. And before, praise God, the cock crowed the next morning. That man lifted up his eyes in hell. You say, how do you know that? Because he turned away from God and he refused God. You say, but I go to church. Well, you let you praise God. <laughs> I always love saying this. Bless your heart. I'm glad you come to church. But are you saved? I'm glad you came through the door this morning. But are you saved by the grace of God? I'm not trying to talk you out of his salvation, friend. But I want to tell you something. Hell's awaiting. Hell's awaiting and enlarging itself. It's meeting them at their coming. That's what I just read to you in the book of Isaiah. It's meeting them. It's awaiting, amen. There ain't going to be no party down there. It's going to be dark. Weeping and wailing, friend. When's the last time you surround somebody? They begin to praise the Lord. You surround somebody and they begin to cry. They begin to weep. They begin to howl out loud. Don't that give you an eerie feeling? Can you imagine that all the time in the darkness? You say, I don't mind darkness. Well, praise God. At the end of the service tonight, me and you go walk to the top of the mountain and we won't take no light. See how you like it then? I surely don't like it. I take two lights when I go to the mountains. I want to make sure if that one breaks, I got another one. Amen. Hey, praise God. But going to that place, oh my, the weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth, I'd hate to be there. You say you can't scare me. I don't want to scare you. I want to tell you hell's waiting on you. If you don't want to do what God tells you to do, and I refuse to do what God tells me to do. Hey, man, there's already been people that turns this preacher off, and you know what I say? You should have turned me off a long time ago. I don't need you anyway. I got enough friends. I got enough people that love me. Hey Amen. If I want everybody to love me, that'd be the failure of my ministry. I'm head standing on the grace of God that I'm going to make it. Amen. Hey, don't worry about it. If people talk bad about you, don't worry about it. If they don't like you because the way you look, don't worry about it. Praise God, I don't care. I'm going to make it to heaven. You know what? Hey, Amen. That, that discord that the brothers try to bring, that discord that sisters try to bring, hell's waiting on them too. Hell's waiting on that one that brings discord in the church. Hell's waiting on that one that talks bad about somebody and goes everywhere they can and downs them. You know what? Weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. Hey, Amen. Hey, you seen that dog come up to him? That dog's on that, that chain and he comes up and you can feel just a little bit of a pinch. Amen. In that place, it ain't going to be a little bit. The dogs are going to be loose, friend. Hey, man, I'd hate to be in that place, wouldn't you? Of torment all day after day after day. You say it ain't a real place. Let's read it together. Hey, we, we got a good account of a man that was in that place. Amen. If it had been a good place, he wouldn't have said, oh, go give me a drop of water. If it had been a good place, he'd have said, tell my brothers, just keep doing what they're doing and come on down here with me. You know what he was telling them? Hells are waiting on my brothers. Hells are waiting on somebody. And I pray that nobody else goes there. He wanted them to know. Oh, Lord, he said, tell Lazarus. Oh, tell Lazarus, give me one drop. It was a place you don't want to be, friend. There's a lot of people say there ain't no hell. You know what? They'll find that one day. Hey, all the unbelievers one day will become believers when they look upon him. The one they pierced in the side, when they look upon him, they'll be believers. Amen. It'll be too late then. It'll be too late to believe that day. I want to know that heaven's waiting on me. Amen. For those that are saved by the grace of God, heaven's waiting on you. Don't you be worried about hell. Amen. If you've got your hand in the hand of the man, don't worry about it. Just do what he tells you to do. As I told you this morning, amen. You seek him diligently with your whole heart. I know that everybody don't get loud like I do, and that's all right. That don't mean you ain't saved, amen. Praise God, I've seen people a whole lot quieter than me, and they was a lot more saved than I am. You say, that don't make sense. Well, I'll talk to you later. They have more Jesus than I've got, amen. I'm telling you, if God tells you to do something, friend, you better do it. Because if you don't, you know what? You'll be just like Jonah was. That fish will start opening up. Can you see that fish out there, amen? And Jonah disrespected God. He disrespected him. And that fish just turned <laughs> and started coming to him. He was waiting on him. That fish was waiting on him to throw him out. Hey, I don't believe he stayed out in the water very long. Praise God. I don't believe he stayed out in that water very long when they cast him over. When they began to ask him and he said, it's my fault. It's too late, friend, if you had praise the Lord. I'd hate to say it's my fault and it's too late. It was too late, amen. He sought after it bitterly like Esau, but he could not find it. He said, it's my fault, boys, throw me over. I'm the one, I'm the reason you're going through this. I'm the reason, praise God. I don't believe he bobbed one time in that water. I believe the fish was waiting on him. Hell, it's waiting on them that don't love the Lord. It's waiting on them that claim to have it, praise God, and they ain't got no more Jesus than a rock does. I'm telling you, friend, I want to live for the Lord, don't you? There's too many people in this world that looks at us and sees so much fault in us, and they turn away, and they say, I'm not going to do that. I don't have no confidence in them. I don't have no confidence in them. You know what the problem is? Don't look at me. I don't care if I'm your pastor or not. I got this many faults as you got, friend. Amen. Probably a little bit more. Look to Jesus. He's the author and the finisher of your faith, friend. Don't think you're going to get it from me. Yes, I I try my best to seek Him all week long so that I can come back here and give it to you 
but it's up to you to come to Him. Amen. When He's on that cross, you look to Him. He don't say look to your pastor. Amen. I know I'm supposed to help you. I know I'm supposed to feed you. I know I'm supposed to guide you. I'm trying to put something together to share with you what my duty here at this church is. It said, praise God, to feed you and to warn you what's to come. I'm trying to warn you today, friend. There's a lot of people. you saying right now, well, preacher, as far as I know, I'm saved by the grace of God, and I'm all right. If I die right now, you don't have to worry about me. I say, thank you. Thank you for doing that. It helps me a lot. But what about those around you? What about those around you that hell's waiting on? What about your sons? What about your daughters? What about your husbands? Amen. What about your wives? What about all this? What about them? Am I concerned with them? Am I as concerned about those as I am about me? Amen. Once I get all right, praise the Lord. You know what happens when a house catches on fire? The mom and daddy don't run out and say, boy, get out on your own. They try to do everything they can to get them out. They try to do and sometimes get burnt, sometimes lose their life. I've read many stories of parents are trying to save their children from the under towed at the beach or from a house on fire or from a car upside down. That mom and daddy don't run away and say, fend for yourself. Praise God. They do everything they can to pull them out of that. I believe we got to be working harder. I believe i got to be working harder. Hey, friend, there's hell waiting on them. I'd hate to think. I've said this before. I'd hate to think. Oh, Lord, God, help me right here as I walk softly. I'd hate to think that I made heaven. Oh, Lord, Jesus, help me. But I caused somebody else to go to hell. Oh, what would that feel like, friend? Hey, I'm glad I'm going. But if I cause somebody else to go to hell, I don't deserve to be there. God, help me today. Have you thought about that? Hey, praise God, if somebody ends up in that place because of me, because of something I showed them wrong, or because I didn't praise the Lord. Hey, bro, Lord God, for those that want you to tell them about the Lord, and you refuse to do it. God help me. Hell's waiting on them. I hope hell's not waiting on any of you. Amen. I hope it's not. I praise God. I hope, as far as I know, you're all going. But just like I said, if you look at the odds, odds are one of us ain't going. Odds are one of you looking at me. Are you looking at me? One of us ain't going. That's odds, amen. That's odds. You say, I don't believe that. Let's read the book, friend. Let's look at the percentages, amen. I'm not very good at math. I say Chad's good at math or Jeff, praise God. I'm not very good at math. But the sower went out and he sowed some seed. You look at the percentages there, friend. You break this up into percentages, somebody probably ain't going. God help today. If there's anybody that hell's a waiting on, they're just playing the part. They're just acting the part, friend. God, would you bring conviction? on them. Lord, it'd be a different day if they raised their hands and said, God, thank you. I don't want to go to that place. You know what? Heaven's waiting on you now. Amen. Heaven's expecting you. Praise God. And you know what? Hell was expecting me, but I'm glad I let him down. Glory to his name. Hell was expecting you, brother, but I'm glad you let him down. Ain't you glad that? Hell was expecting every one of us. I'd like to let him down. Oh, Lord, I've tried my best in my life, and I've, I've failed it many times, but I try my best not to let nobody down. I know I do it. I'm not saying I don't, but I really hold that up real high, praise God, in my character, my personality, not to let anybody down. But you know what? This one don't bother me. It don't bother me that hell was let down, that I ain't going there no more. I think I preached a message one time. I'm not going to hell. <laughs> Amen. Can you raise your hand and say, I'm not going to that place by the grace of God. Amen. By the grace of God, I'm not going to that place. <laughs> Are you concerned about those around you? You say, I'm saved. I'm doing good. My family's good. My children are saved. My husband's saved. We got plenty of food. Okay. I wanted to ask you this in Sunday school, but I didn't. I'm going to ask you right now, praise God. And I don't want you to say it out loud. But right now, you ought to be able to tell yourself, there's at least one sinner or one backslider you're working on. If you can't say there's one sinner or one backslider you're working on, you need to find what you need to be doing for the Lord. Amen. It ain't about me and my four. It's about everybody making it to heaven. If you really love the Lord and you really seek Him diligently, it'll burn your heart, friend, when you wake up at night knowing your family's going to hell and hell's waiting on them. Hey, who is that sinner or that backslider you're working on right now? You may not have seen him in a couple of weeks. I'm not saying you call him every day. That don't always work. But there ought to be one sinner or one backslider that you're working on, that you're trying to show the grace and the love of God because you know hell's waiting on them. I hope you can think of one of them. If you can think of one and you can't think of one, when you go home today, I hope that you pray and beg God to show you who it is. Who is it? You say, well, I don't, I don't do much. Praise God, it don't matter. I don't care. God gives everybody a measure of faith. He gives everybody a duty. Amen. The calling of God, as I said this morning, is without repentance. It's not just about me and my wife, our children, my nieces. It ain't about that. It's about everybody. 
It's about everybody in our family. It's about everybody that I meet tomorrow. Chances are. Hey, praise God, I'll say this, don't matter where I'm at. Chances are tomorrow at my job, I'm going to rub elbows with a lot of center people. I'm going to be around a lot of center people. We're going to be around a lot of center people in our job tomorrow. And chances are they didn't go to church. Chances are they, they didn't put their heart in the Lord today. Chances are, praise God, they're still smelling like the weekend, still smelling like that sin, but hell's are waiting on them. And God, would you give me concern for them that I would not sleep, God, until I get the burden. Who's the burden for? Hey, years ago, people prayed for a burden. They prayed to have a burden for you. They prayed to have a burden. You know what? If you want to get close to God, beg Him for a burden. It don't have to be your family. Really, it'd be better if it ain't your family. Be honest with you. And be honest with you, if you really want to get a true burden that comes from the Lord, you ask Him to put somebody on your heart that every time you go to eat a bite of food, you think about hell waiting on them. Every time you take a cool drink of water, you think about that rich man who fared sumptuously, looked like they got everything. You may know people, and I do, looked like they fared sumptuously, friend. They got everything. They're not worried about their electric bill going up last month. They're not worried about none of that. They ain't got no idea how much electric bill is. <laughs> they ain't worried about that, but you know what? Hell's waiting on them too. Hell's waiting on that man's got his pocket full of money today that's going to go down here and buy this and buy that and travel here and fly there and fly here. Praise God. That man ain't worried about it, but one day he is. <laughs> one day, just like that rich man, he found out when he lifted up his eyes in hell, he wanted to get out of there, did he not? Amen. He wanted to get out of that place. What did he say? There's a great gulf. <laughs> There's a great gulf, but you know what? Praise God. I'd like to stay on the right side of that gulf. God, don't let me go on that side. If there's anybody out around tomorrow, if there's anybody, praise God, that I'm going to be talking to tomorrow, I'd like for them to feel the Spirit of God on me. So real, it brings conviction to them. You say that ain't real. Well, praise God, you ain't never met a good old timer when you got around them. And this is what they used to do to me. And this is how you know it was an old timer. Some people don't like this. It really wasn't working this generation. I hope everybody's listening. When I was around old timers, Brother Jeff, you know the first thing they told me? How was work today? They knew a man was supposed to work, didn't they? They knew a man and a woman was supposed to take care of the house. They knew that they were supposed to do this. They wanted to make sure you worked. How was work today? How was work today? Amen. I know some people can't. Disability, that's fine. I know that. But I'm talking about they want to know how was work today. And then they start talking about the Lord. Then they start to find out if you was where you need to be with God. Hey, they didn't have to call down on you. You felt it inside of your heart when you wasn't right. You knew when you hadn't been doing things right. And you know what they're telling you? Hell's waiting on you, boy. Hell's waiting on you. And that work you did today ain't going to compare to the work you're going to do in that city. Oh, Lord, as she comes to the music. Oh, God, help us today. Help us to know that we're not going to that place. Hell, man, you used to wait it on me. But by the grace of God, not by my works, amen, not by my white button-up shirt, praise God, not by my shoes, my pants, not by anything of that, I'm making it by His grace, amen. Now, those things might follow me, but I'm going by His grace today, amen. As she begins to play, I'm through. I've done all the Lord told me to do. Hell's a waiting, friend. <laughs> but if you're saved, heaven's a waiting. Oh, Lord, I believe I preached that wait is over. <laughs> I praise God. <laughs> hey, where are you going? <laughs> Are you going to that awful place? You say, I've been coming here since you've been preaching. Well, bless your heart. Are you where you need to be with God? Am I where I need to be with God? Have I rejected this world and refused to be conformed, praise God, but I've been transformed by the renewing of my mind? I'm not going to be conformed to this world. I'm going to be different. And that's easy for me as we all stand. Some will listen to this and they'll say, well, that surely wasn't for me. I'm sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. Well, praise God, if you really filled the Holy Ghost, this message was for you. Because there's somebody in your family you ain't got a burden for like you need to. There's somebody in my family I ain't got a burden for. Amen. When I go home today, if God lets me eat lunch, my prayer ought to be extra long. I shouldn't just say, God is great, let me have the food. I ought to have an extra long prayer today and say, God, would you save my laws? God, before I take this food into my body, would you save them? How you said it don't work. It worked for me. Somebody prayed for no ignorant sinner boy. Didn't know nothing about the Lord. I probably knew how to spell the name of Jesus. That's all I knew about him. I didn't know nothing else about Jesus. But he's able to get inside of my heart. Amen. He was able to tell me, oh Lord, that he loved me in spite of myself. And you know what he said with his open arms? Heaven's a waiting on you, boy. Heaven's a waiting on you. But you know what? Hell's also a waiting 
Every head by the right closed. Praise God. There's got to be somebody you're concerned about today. I don't care if you live by yourself. You don't have no friends. You don't have no children. You don't have no uncles or nieces or nephews. There's got to be somebody that you're concerned about today dying and going to hell. It's a waiting on them. And they're going to want to get out. But you know they can't. Oh, Lord, once you go in, you ain't coming out. It's like that old minor trap. <laughs> them minors know how to get in. They love to eat that bread and them hot dogs, but they can't get out on their own. The only way they're going to get out is when somebody comes and opens a trap. But you know what? When that hell trap is open, it's thrown into the lake of fire, ever to burn, ever to burn. Praise God. Anybody else like come pray? I thank God for these. They're concerned with their loss. They're concerned with their loss. Say, man, is there somebody you're concerned with? Come and pray today. You're not coming to me. Hell is waiting, friend. I haven't told the Lord I didn't want to preach this. I told the Lord, let me preach something else. He Praise God, put it on my heart a month ago. I said, God, no, I preached something else. And last night I tried and tried to dig for something else. I tried to read my Bible. I tried to look back, maybe, praise God, to, to find the thought. And God said, no, you preach hell's awaiting. You preach hell's awaiting for them. Those that are turned away from me, the backslider, the ones that's cold, amen. He said, I wish you was cold or I wish you was hot. He said, because you're lukewarm, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. And hell's awaiting on you. Hell's awaiting on you. Oh, Lord, I'm reminded of that wedding supper. <laughs> he gave the invitation. But those that knew him, they decided not to come. They come back and told him. He said, you go out and compel them. Go on the highways and the hedges. Oh, good and bad, and compel them to come. We read about that story. They're all enjoying their time at the wedding. But there's one, Amen. They was one when the master came down. He looked and he said, how'd that one get in here? He said, how'd that one get in here? He ain't got the wedding garment on. He just comes to church, but he really ain't saved. He just comes to church, but he's never asked forgiveness. He's trying to act like he's saved, but I can look at his heart and say, that man don't belong here. That man don't belong. Yeah, oh Lord, have mercy. He said, bind him hand and foot. And cast him in outer darkness, friend. Hell was waiting on that man. Hell was waiting on that one. Oh, Lord Jesus, help us today. God, give peace today to these families. Give peace today. God, I pray you bring conviction upon the children of this church that may not be saved. Upon the husbands and the daughters and the nieces and the nephews, God. Upon all of them. Because if not, hell's awaiting. Hell's awaiting. Oh, Lord. <laughs> but I like it when I'm reminded heaven's waiting. Backslider, sinner man, heaven's really waiting on you. God is waiting on you, ready to receive you. You don't have to go to hell. I don't care what nobody told you. You don't have to go to that awful place. Weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. A place where a man's thirsty. A place where a man wants to warn his brothers. He said, though yet was raised from the dead, they still wouldn't believe. That's where we're at today, friend. They was one raised from the dead. They was one raised from the dead. His name's Jesus. Oh, Lord. Anybody else, I'd come pray. For we pray. God, touch my brother. I pray you strengthen him, Lord. Such an encouragement and a light to me. Oh, God, you'll never know. The encouragement he gives me to keep fighting. Bless his family. Oh, touch every one of them. They'd all be saved. Praise God. Father in heaven, we come to you one more time. <laughs> as humble as we know how. Asking God that you touch. Touch every one of us here. I beg of you, Lord, as a pastor, as a shepherd of this flock, carnally. Lord, please don't let any of them go to hell. I don't know their heart. I don't know how they live all week long. Praise God, they may be living in adultery and fornication all week. I don't know. They may live in idolatry. I don't know. But God, if they do, it's my prayer right now that you bring conviction to them. But first of all, God, search my heart. Search my heart first, God. If there's anything inside of me 
Lord, that brings a reproach to you. Would you put conviction on me, Lord? God, don't let me rest easy, but bring that conviction. Father, touch everybody here. It's my prayer that we take this message, Lord, and share it with all of those that are outside the fold, all of those that stayed home today, maybe, and could have been here. There are those without a shadow of doubt that could have been here today. There are those maybe that's listening that could have been at a church today. We trust God that you'd bless them. Please be with our brother and our sister that's struggling down the road. Be with that family, God. Bless and touch them. We thank you so much. Thank you for the song, for the music.